threat prevention in checkpoint firewalls. Threat prevention. So until now our entire focus was on access control where we controlled the access of traffic and implemented various types of policies that from which source to which destination using which service or application the uh, traffic should be accepted or dropped or should be given a message or redirected to another uh, user check uh, or maybe let's say uh, uh, based on uh, source uh, user or object uh, or URL category so that was the entire focus of uh, of the access control however now we move on to threat prevention now the general function of threat prevention is that when the traffic is allowed from a source to a destination what is the return traffic i want to see inside the packet inside the payload is that legit traffic or not is that uh, traffic that is coming back uh, uh, is there any threat inside it so let me quickly show you a, a picture uh, where we can uh, explain and understand the threat and uh, uh, various types of malwares so let me go through a quick overview of threat and threat types and malware uh, so these are some of the threat types where we have hackers uh, there could be good ones and bad ones viruses that uh, they come under malware and we have spyware that does uh, uh, spying softwares that are uh, there that spies on my network or PC or host we have key loggers where they basically uh, uh, log the whatever you type uh, Trojan horses are there which I will explain here and uh, online predators are there uh, pop-ups that comes uh, on your screen when you access uh, a website or somewhere some uh, some uh, content worms are there which i will explain here rootkits is basically a, a tool set of uh, uh, um, intrusion or a malicious uh, application or it's it's more of a networking uh, toolkit type of a thing it's a tool set that contains different uh, uh, malicious applications or code inside it so identity theft is there lockups are there and we have malware and all these uh, comes under the malware uh, these are this is basically malicious softwares and and we have virus which is very common uh, and well known uh, where uh, there is uh, basically code written inside an application this and user intervention is basically required to execute uh, that uh, virus and we have trojan horse which uh, which uh, is an application that uh, looks like a regular application however uh, there is malicious uh, code written into it and it also creates backdoor for the intruders and attackers and we have adware uh, advertisement uh, softwares which comes and pop-ups on your screen so uh, and we have spyware uh, which is spying on on my network or pc or a system inside uh, the infrastructure we have spam or scam that uh, uses the email services uh, to send uh, um, malicious codes or uh, links uh, and we have bots botnets which are robot uh, uh, networks uh, basically what it does is that it splits uh, it does its job automatically uh, and it splits in, into your uh, infrastructure uh, and we have ransomware which basically encrypts your uh, content or your files or or computer and then the intruder or the uh, whoever has the key uh, to decrypt the the uh, encrypted uh, documents or files uh, they will basically ask you for the for money or something and we have worms that basically infects a system and then spreads and uh, replicates to other systems in the network and it basically uh, destroys the user uh, files it also uh, does consume the bandwidth and sometimes you may uh, feel that your system is slow and you're getting less bandwidth so worms could uh, also be there uh, so this is the general concept of malware and some threat types now in checkpoint firewalls we have threat prevention mechanisms if you come to the threat prevention and policies you have one threat prevention uh, profile that's not yet been configured and uh, it hasn't been given a name and and if you if you see here um, it has ips enabled it has anti-bot 
it has uh, antivirus enabled threat emulation is another one a threat emulation is basically uh, when there is an unknown threat and uh, and uh, the checkpoint firewall uh, would identify it and uh, and then it would put it in the known threat uh, uh, types and we have threat extraction that would extract it for threat prevention to work what i need to do is i need to activate the blades uh, on my uh, on my gateways so i right now have uh, so i right now have uh, three gateways what i'll do is i'll go ahead and activate uh, all those five blades on the cphq uh, so uh, so first let's go ahead and give this a name this uh, let's call it threat uh, uh, threat prevention so let's go ahead and publish and install this on my cphq install so while this is installing the policy let's go to the uh, server uh, gateways and servers so i have my cphq here i right click and edit so as you can see i right now only have these blades active on my cphq what i want to do is i need to enable these gate uh, these blades on the cphq uh, i'll click the uh, ips blade where it says that do you want to if there is any intrusion do you want to detect it only and create lock for you or if you want to detect and prevent it so i'll say detect and prevent it i'll do the same for uh, for the anti-bot detect or prevent so i'll say detect and prevent and antivirus i'll check that blade and threat emulation so uh, for threat emulation you need to be connected to the threat cloud so uh, this feature is also in the palo alto firewalls if you have worked with the palo alto firewalls they they call uh, they call it wildfire there so what happens is if the checkpoint firewall comes across an unidentified threat so what it does is that it forwards it to the cloud and then they have a factory team there and then they will I didn't uh, check uh, whether that uh, is really a threat or not and then they will assign a severity level etc and then uh, will put it in the known or unknown uh, threat uh, on the no uh, in the known threat types so uh, let's go ahead and say next to it So it's giving me an error of uh, of the sick connectivity and policy i'll ignore this and say next to it finish i'll do the same for the uh for the uh for the uh threat extraction i don't have connectivity right now with them and this is a, a vm version of it and i don't have any support and uh, no license for uh, or on this uh, checkpoint gateway so i'll skip the configuration and say next finished i'll check the anti-spam and email security as well and i'll say okay so as you can see i have the threat blades now um, activated and installed on my cphq so uh, i have these blades now so i'll go ahead and install this on my uh, gateway install a quick note guys uh, once i published and uh, installed the uh, new changes on the uh, gateways i got uh, an error message of the license for the extraction blade and uh, for the anti-spam uh, spam and email security blade so what i had to do is uh, i i uncheck them because i'm using the uh, evaluation uh, version of this uh, gateway and pms and all the uh, firewalls so uh, uh, they are about to expire on 26 
so uh, they were basically giving me an error so i had to uncheck them let me also show you the properties of the threat prevention policy so we have the uh, uh, the threat prevention policy which we could uh, change from basic to optimized to strict which once again i told you strict would be more processor intensive uh, you can view it and uh, create a new one yourself and if you come to edit right now if you check here all the five uh, blades are activated uh, for this policy and if you want if you don't want any one of them so you can uncheck them and you have uh, uh, you can also bring changes on the on the user check if you wanted a specific message to be shown up when there is something detected uh, in terms of antivirus or uh, if it's uh, anti-bot or, or threat emulation or a threat extraction so let's go ahead and try to test this threat prevention policy if it's working so what i will do is i will go to my windows 10 client uh, from the uh, hq and try to download a virus from the public network which would come through the uh, cphq the checkpoint gateway that i have uh, in the edge of my network so what i will do is i will go to windows 10 uh, we basically can use eicar.org um, but I will use this site and try to download that uh, virus file and let's see if uh, my gateway uh, would uh, take an action by stopping it so I will try to download uh, the ICR antivirus uh, file so it's uh, basically um, giving me an a certificate error message i'll say continue so now you can see the page is being blocked and it was because of the malicious file and exploit download so let's go ahead and see if i have a lock for that so if i come down here i should see uh my antivirus blade uh, should have stopped that file from being downloaded so this is uh, inspection that has happened so i need something that is blocked yeah this one this is the antivirus blade that has uh, stopped so if we double click on it so the, the antivirus blade has uh, found this thread and uh, the severity was high confidence level was high and it was a malicious file exploit download so this was the file name and signature and this was the url uh, source was this from windows uh, pc and uh, and the action was block and its inspection also being performed there so so that's how you implement uh, threat prevention on checkpoint firewalls. Thank you.